you must be a gamer because you clicked on this video. If you are a gamer, then you in fact buy video games. There is nothing better as a gamer than getting a new video game that you can sink your nasty Mountain Dew Doritos filled teeth into. Let me paint a picture for you. You're nine years old. Your dad just got home from work and he hands you a bubble mailer the size of an Xbox game. And you think, oh dad, you shouldn't have. Can I open it? You're slowly opening it, revealing, holy jeez, it's Crapland for the original Xbox. The game no one's talking about. For a very long time, I thought it said Crapland. It wasn't until I got into high school that I realized there's an S there. It's Scrapland. <laughs> Gamer moment. Getting a new video game, even if it's an older game, but it's new to you, is just as awesome. Especially when you only get games on Christmas and your birthday. Unless you were one of those lucky ones that also got presents on Easter. That is God's holiday and a time for you to eat egg-shaped chocolates from a seven-foot-tall bunny. Not a time to get Sly Cooper 2 for the PS2. As a gamer, getting a new game was always a huge risk, especially back in the day before we had YouTube and could watch the plethora of game reviews before we would buy a game. All we had to go off of back then was the cover art and little Joey on 5th Street's opinion because he got every new game. It's always a toss-up though. Sometimes it's a banger, and sometimes your dad brings home a copy of what's supposed to be your second Halo, but the disc is scratched and you can't get past the fifth mission, so you have to wait till your early 20s to figure out what happens. When it comes to buying video games, there really is only two types of gamers. Gamers that buy every single game, day one, brand new, and then people like myself who like to wait a few years after the game comes out to get it because it's cheaper. The used video game world can be an entire video by itself, so really what I wanted to focus on in this video is buying brand new video games in today's modern gaming market. There is something special about brand new video games. It's fun to get caught up in the hype you see all the marketing for the games, you get to talk to your friends about it. Everything surrounding new releases is super exciting. And then bam, day one you and six of your homies are all in a Discord call streaming to each other and playing for hours on end. There has been so many times in the last two years that me and the boys have all gotten a new game together and have played it for each other streaming it in Discord because couch co-op is dead. Playing Elden Ring with my friends was tons of fun. We would talk about secrets, secret locations, talk about where to find certain bosses, help each other fight bosses. There were days where we would literally put a full day's worth of work into Elden Ring land. We also did this with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Despite how much you hate those games, we still had a lot of fun. Discovering all the new Pokemon and battling each other to figure out what our weaknesses were was awesome. Tears of the Kingdom dropped and a lot of us no life to that for the first week. One of us may or may not have taken off work for a week because we were going to be out of town. I mean, technically he's not wrong. He was in the land of Hyrule. No, Dad, I have to save the princess. I mean, come on, look at her ass. Playing these new games day one is so hype and feels bad when all the homies are playing Diablo 4. I had grandma Wi-Fi, and we all know that gaming ain't happening on that. Even the experience of just going to the store and getting a new game is exciting. I've gone to midnight releases and yes, it reeks of gamer, but everybody there is just as excited to get the new game as you are, so it makes the smell bearable. Now we're going to talk about the terrible things that comes with buying brand new video games and really ruins the experience for me and is kind of why I don't really buy new video games all that often. Keep in mind a lot of what I'm going to bitch about really only applies to people that buy physical. So if you're a digital only person, I hope somebody hacks your account and downloads all the hentai games. I'm just kidding. I'm actually gonna be switching to uh, digital only here soon. And you wanna know why? The year is 2022, August 25th. Pac-Man World Repack came out and I couldn't find it anywhere. I looked everywhere day one, couldn't find it. It took me a bit to find one because no major retailers had them in stock. Probably because it's kind of a niche game. Could have downloaded a day one digitally and it would have ran better on Steam. All the digital people are like, I already played it. Screw you. I got it physically. I can touch this. You can't touch digital. Oh, you should have pre-ordered the game, you're probably saying. Well, let's talk about pre-orders. The idea of pre-ordering games is so appealing to me, especially where a lot of games come with pre-order bonuses. You give a company some money with the expectations that day one, your game and all the little goodies are gonna show up at your doorstep. But life doesn't always work out the way we want it to. In 2020, Mario 3D All-Stars came out. I had pre-ordered it on Amazon, and the day that it was supposed to arrive on my doorstep came and went, and no game showed up. And I had to watch all my digital-only gamer bros play the game without me. I got the game like three or four days after. 
I did, however, get one pre-order on time, though, and it was from one of my favorite series of all time, Halo. Halo Infinite I pre-ordered from Walmart, and it showed up that morning on my doorstep. So I woke up, got my game, opened it, had all the little goodies in there, and I was able to play day one. Well, you should have pre-ordered it for in-store pickup. And yeah, that probably works most of the time, but the last two occasions I've seen have not. Cole and I were going on a trip and he was so excited to get Persona 5 Royale for the Nintendo Switch because he wanted to play it while we were driving. The day came, we went to GameStop, and he went in there to get his game and they said, sorry buddy, it ain't here, come back tomorrow. And then they called him the next day, but it was too late because we had already left. Fame pre-ordered Tears of the Kingdom and one morning we were greeted with a mother from his room. We went in there to find out that his precious pre-order had been delayed over the weekend. What are you doing, sir? Sir, is this about my delay, sir? My game got delayed to Monday? Yeah, now please stop filming me, sir. He suffered while the rest of us played Zelda without him. Except Cole, he shared. Cole pre-ordered Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and his pre-order was delayed, so Thane went and got it day one and let Cole play his copy. Pre-orders don't always show up on time, but if you're digital only, then yeah, you can just laugh at all of us physical nerds. I think the last straw for me, and really why I want to switch to digital only, was when the Metroid Prime Remake came out for the Switch. I looked everywhere for it day one. I couldn't find it. I looked everywhere for it the rest of that week and couldn't find it. It was like a month and a half after the game had released that I finally found a physical copy. The digital only people got to play the game a week early and they didn't have to go to every Best Buy, Walmart, and GameStop employee and ask them where their gamer game is. This is another big reason that's got me like, man, I wish I had gotten a lot more games digitally, is this right here. This is my digital copy of Dark Souls for the Xbox 360. I had got this with Xbox Games with Gold back on the 360, and I can still download this on my Xbox One today and play it. Digital games are saved to your account, and as long as the console is backwards compatible with that game, you can re-download it anytime and play it. Obviously, Xbox is really good with backwards compatibility, and hopefully they continue this throughout all the consoles that they make. But even if a digital store is down, as long as you have bought the game, it's saved to your account and you can download it anytime you want. You don't have to worry about losing your discs or your discs breaking or getting scratched. But with all that being said, I also need to state that there are caveats with digital only gaming. You have to worry about storage space, especially since games just keep getting bigger and bigger because of graphics. Woo! If you have slow internet, strap in because it's going to be a while. But like this still applies to physical games where the disc is just the license that says you can play it and you still have to download the game anyway. This happened to me when I got Halo 5. I had gotten it many years after the game had released, so when I popped it into my Xbox One console and it said, wow, you can play your game in 50 hours. I said no, I pulled it out and I didn't play Halo 5 for like four months after that. I've also been a paranoid little bitch when it comes to digital games, especially my Steam account. If Steam ever goes down, there goes my who knows how many hundreds of dollars I put in into it to buy all these games. I love the idea of owning games physically, but with modern gaming, I'm not even sure it matters. How many games have come out in recent times where there's a huge day one patch that makes the game unplayable if you don't get it otherwise? If you don't have internet, good luck bro, you ain't playing. That brings me to my next large point that sucks when it comes to buying brand new video games, is a lot of games come half-baked or like not even baked at all. It's like the developers just threw all the ingredients in a bowl and then gave it to us raw. Cyberpunk 1927, Battlefield 2069, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which is probably the least offensive on this list. Redfall, Gollum, what a disgrace to the Lord of the Rings franchise. Let's make a game about a character that is essentially a guide dog. That's a great idea. Imagine being one of the gamers that got hyped for any of these games. You watch all the badass trailers, you get behind all the marketing, you pre-order the game, you talk about it with your friends, the whole nine yards. You finally get the game, you pop it in, and wowie, a Taco Bell poop is more exciting than this. Let's be honest, nobody really got hyped for Gollum. It was dead on arrival. Modern gaming is so bad right now. Like, why is it too much to expect a finished functioning game from a developer? Imagine buying a household appliance, but you had to wait for the manufacturer 2.0 patch. Well, geez, I, I can't wait for that blender patch to come out so I could make a smoothie.
See how dumb that sounds? Even just saying it's stupid. It's false advertising when game companies show you this, but you get this. Getting new games is always risky. Unless it's made by first party Nintendo devs that make bangers like Tears of the Kingdom. I've been burned many times by these new video game releases. You vouch for these companies, and then they put it in your poop shoe. To me, waiting a couple years for a game to come out is so much more appealing. It's usually cheaper, you don't have to pay retail price. If the game is broken, it gives the devs time to fix it. And if the game just sucks, you don't have to be the one that wastes your money to find out. Here is a perfect example of what happens when you wait to get a video game. Sonic Frontiers had released and it looked really cool. But at the time, I was playing through Sonic 06 and I was really Sonic'd out. So I waited and a week after, I had happened to watch a beat'em ups video. He told me that the game was 20 bucks cheaper. So by golly, I went to GameStop and I got the game for $20 cheaper and they threw in a steelbook for me. I waited one week and I got all of that. Buying used games on eBay is really fun and easy too. The games are usually well below retail price and when you get the game, if you don't like it after playing it, you can always resell it and get your money back. Digital games doesn't always work that way. Sure, they have refund policies, but it's usually with restrictions. I go thrifting all the time and it's really fun to try and find hidden gems amongst the heaping piles of garbage. Garage sales are great and so is Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, I'm a big fan of the used video game market, but it does have its issues as well. The retro video game market is pretty stupid, especially for Nintendo games. Sometimes if you're wanting to play an older title, you gotta shell out a couple hundred dollars to play it. But once most gamers hit this paywall, they usually put on their pirate hats and they turn to the E-word that purists don't like talking about, but have probably used themselves. I'm not paying three grand to play Little Samson for 30 minutes and hate it. There are so many issues with modern gaming and just getting new games in general. But when a new game comes out, and it just hits, and you and all the homies got it, and the internet won't shut up about it. There's just nothing like it.